he forgot to mention Simon's also a recording artist, indie recording artist. That's how she, that's how she knows how to work the mic stand. And <laughs> I don't know any of that stuff. Oh, you're so funny. So we uh, Simon had a great idea on the plane um, to for the format of this. And I thought, when she first hit me with that, I said, what a great idea, that's brilliant. And then I started realizing that she'd been thinking about this for a while, and she's done all her homework, and I haven't done any homework or preparation for this. So, you know, I'll be the one that's uh, winging it, and she'll be the one that looks very professional. That's not true. But um, I did do some homework, because my idea was that we could interview each other a little bit, ask each other some questions. So me, obviously, from the perspective of a songwriter and artist, and Michael from the perspective of a publisher. So, Michael, my first question, I actually don't need to look at my notes for this one. Oh, it must be about money. <laughs> no, it's not. So, I'm 17 years old, and I live in this little apartment, cockroach-infested apartment, and I have a four-track, and I'm making these little tapes. And I remember sitting there in frustration in front of my four-track machine, thinking, how is anybody ever going to hear one of these songs? And it took me years to get anyone to hear any of those songs. Well, actually, it was different songs by then, by the time anyone was listening. But how could you have saved me time? What would you say to the 17-year-old me in that moment? Wow. No, I'm stumped. <laughs> no. Um, you know what? Uh, I think that um, most important thing, uh, this, well, there's, there's kind of two elements to it. One is that um, there's an awful lot of people out there looking for you. Uh, in the music industry. Uh, by you, I mean aspiring uh, artists, talent. Um, and more than you think, maybe, and, well, less this year than last year because of all the layoffs in the industry, but certainly more people than you think, and now with MySpace and tools like that, there, there's, um, it's almost impossible to be making really great music for any length of time. And as long as you have let it out of your bedroom and let anybody heard it, it's pretty difficult to not make some noise. Uh, and anybody's making noise, the music industry finds. Um, so uh, the number one thing is, yeah, I think you have to make insanely great music. Stole that line from Steve Jobs, who I think is one of the great geniuses of the century. Uh, this is a guy who's changed the world like at least three times. And um, you know, when he was been make, when he's been making the things or directing the teams that invent the things that change the world three times, he has this mantra that he keeps coming at them with, and and. Uh, um, you know, the, the story came out when the, during the development of the Macintosh computer, which was, you know, you guys were all look all too young to remember before the Macintosh, but, you know, before that you had to type DOS commands in your computer, and when the Macintosh came along with the first user, you know, GUI, you know, graphical user interface, and he had these teams of people under, in a separate building on the campus uh, at Apple with a pirate flag on the roof, and, um, and it was a very secret project, and he was developing this, and um, they've all, the engineers and, and the software designers would thought, think they had an amazing you know, machine ready for him and they'd come and demo it for him and he'd say, no, you guys don't understand. Good's not good enough. Great's not good enough. Only insanely great will do. And I think there's the same thing about music. I think that, um, cause, so when you look at his products and his, and his software and his, 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 his uh, consumer experience that he creates, it's, it's just, in, it's, it's insanely great. And, it's just you know, undeniably a great experience. And you see all kinds of, uh, of competitors that can't really quite measure up. And, and it's because they, 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 they don't, may not know what great is, and they, they're satisfied with less than great, or less than insanely great. And there's a, there's a, it's an either or, it's a very binary, I think, when it comes to the public. They either love something or they hate it. And, um, and certainly in the industry, when you're trying to get your music through that Python called the industry, it's a very binary thing too. People either think it's fantastic or it's shit and there's nothing in between and so you want to be on the fantastic side of the equation with your music rather than the shit side <laughs> do you have a question that you'd like to ask me would you want to trade off are you ready uh, ask, ask me again actually i'll tell you what i'll tell you why i ended up signing uh simon and i was really lucky that she would go with us was um uh, I was certainly aware of her, um, you know, through the industry. This time, the buzz and the noise about Simon had 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 uh, been around, and I was certainly aware, aware of her. And we had a uh, it took ten years, by the way. <laughs> it was ten years after seventeen. And um, and we had this um, songwriting event at my uh, at my office slash studio where um, we were sort of um, 
uh, brainstorming or woodshopping songs for a, um, a, a recording artist that didn't really write. And so we invited um, a bunch of people from our roster to come and write with people, and then we just sort of put people the work from our roster in the mix that we had respect for their work or we were curious about them or whatever. And Simon ended up being the star of the um, of the whole thing. And I was so impressed by not only the work she did, but the way she went about doing it. Um, I'd never seen this before or since. Um, she wanted to get inside the head of the person she was writing songs for because that person had to sing words that they really believed. So she actually spent hours interviewing this girl and she had you know, a whole pad, legal pad full of notes from the interviewing. She wanted to know, you know everything about her life from you know, the color of the walls in her room to what she saw outside her bedroom window and to what she had for breakfast, all about her, her parents, her sisters, her brothers. And from all this whole legal pad full of notes, came a song that was basically the girl's life, including the color of the, of the paint on her wall. And when Simon and her co-writers first played the song for the, for the girl and her father, they both cried. And I thought that, wow, what, a, what an amazing you know, um, uh, approach to the work and what an incredible song. So this is something I had to get involved with. So I guess my question would be, why did you want to sign with a publisher? Or why did you end up signing with a publisher? The truth is that uh, EMI Music Publishing was like the ivory tower of songwriting in Canada, and I wanted in. You know, I wanted all of the benefits that having a publisher can can bring, which is it connects you to a world of songwriters and uh, people who really care about songs and, and understand them. And I wanted a team. I didn't want to be alone anymore in my bedroom. You know, I wanted to have somebody I could go to and say, "Hey, is this any good?" And who cared if I won or I lost? You know, I, it's really lonely. I think being a, a creative person can be really lonely. And God, <laughs> so I signed for emotional reasons. <laughs> Certainly wasn't the money. <laughs> and so uh, I, I, my I was right, though. In the end, I was right. I got what I wanted. I got an amazing team of people who care about my songs and who fight for them. <laughs> 